Since you're still here, I guess that means you decided to continue on this journey towards developing as a musician, percussionist, drummer, whatever you're here for. My job is to help you to the best of my ability, to help guide you, mentor you, and give you a kick in the butt whenever you need one. We're gonna talk about materials because a soldier doesn't go into battle without armor and I'm not going to trust a mechanic that has no tools with him. All right, so if you're gonna be prepared, you need to have the materials that's needed to help get the job done correctly, or at least not make you face more challenges than you're already gonna face. All right, so let's get into it. We're gonna talk about what you'll need now and what you'll need later. First, a pair of sticks. Now, when you go into your local music store, uh, some around me are uh, Paramore, Guitar Center, um, Sound Exchange, Hogtown. Uh, depending on where you are, you may not even have one of these around you but those are the ones that come to my mind. You can always look online, right? So Steve Weiss, amazing, amazing website to get sticks from. Um, that's, honestly, that's just my go-to, right? You, you can't go wrong there. So steveweiss.com. Uh, it might say Steve Weiss Percussion. I'm pretty sure it's just steveweiss.com. Google it, it'll be the first thing that pops up. You'll know when you're there. Now, I like to go straight towards 5A, if you're a drummer, or even if you're not, even if you're just younger, but you need something that doesn't have a lot of weight to it, right? Because over time, your muscles need to develop. Go ahead and get some sticks. Uh, even if you're not younger, but you just want something that's lightweight to help you focus where you need to, that the weight of the stick is not gonna be uh, something that's going to uh, make it harder for you to initiate the movements, right? then 5A is gonna be perfectly fine. Uh, Vic Firth, honestly, usually you can't go wrong by just looking up like most popular 5A <laughs> and just buying that one. I mean, like really, anything is gonna be better than nothing. For you percussionist, concert snare sticks, right? SteveWise.com, most popular, and just look at them, um, Get look in the description, look at some reviews, and you, you can't go wrong. Right, uh, Vic Firth is a really good brand, but there's plenty of others out there, but Vic Firth is usually a strong, stable, reliable brand. General concert sticks, definitely need them. Second, for my percussions out there, some mallets, All right? So we're gonna need two mallets. Marimbo mallets, xylophone mallets, glockenstiel bell mallets, timpani mallets. Honestly, there's a good amount of percussive instruments out there. You can go ahead and try to find all of these, but what I'm gonna do is down below, I'm gonna give you a PDF, and that PDF is going to have a link to a couple different um, bundles of stuff together that are, are sold. And I'm gonna find one that's pretty inexpensive. For those of you that aren't able to make that monetary investment now, and I'm also gonna pick a more expensive one for those of you that are a little bit more experienced and need to get other materials. This goes for all of you guys. Ear protection is a must, mandatory. We deal with such high frequency instruments and they're piercing, they are piercing, right? and they are only gonna damage these two eardrums that you got, right? These are the most important drums you have, and you need to protect them well. So ear protection is going to reduce the sound, and it's going to be like a volume down knob to where you can still hear clearly, but not damage your ears in the process. Those will also be linked down below to a couple that, I, that I've gotten in the past that I, I really trust. But honestly, go to music store, ask for ear protection, that's all you have to do, get it. I don't care if it doesn't look like it's the best, get it. Your body's gonna be able to understand music at such a higher rate more consistently because you're not damaging the one thing you have to listen to the world around you and to adjust. If you're getting all these things individually, you're gonna need a stick bag to put all your sticks in, right? So you can look up stick bag, and if you have a drum set player, you can, you can have um, different sets of sticks so you can have a medium stick like 5a it's a good general stick for drum set players but you can also have rods 
You can have brushes, moon gel that dampens the head of the drums so you don't have this long sustain after you hit it so you can hear it more precisely. Even invest in a light to put on your stand so you can see your music in case you're in the light or in the dark. That's also investment you can make. Uh, definitely an option, not necessary right now. Those are some great things to get started now, but let's go away from um, the things we used to make music. Let's go to the things we use to be able to grow our understanding of music itself. This is my binder. This is my practice binder. I even have a little, <laughs> I even made a little thing called practice binder, so I know it's mine. And you know what, in the PDF, I'm gonna give you something to print out to put in front of your binder. Yes, and to remind you of certain things that I'm talking about, and also things that you should always be thinking about when you practice. I think that would be awesome. That would be so amazing if someone did that for me. So I want to do that for you. So check out the PDF. I'll have that in there along with the list and other things, obviously. But practice binder, all right? Uh, not too big because remember, it, you want to be able to easily move it around, right? You want to be able to just take it out of your bag and, and start playing. So what you need to do is have a thin binder, right? Maybe even thinner than this, especially for you starting out, you don't need a huge binder. You do not need a huge binder. Um, you may be in a program where you have a music book, right? Uh, a music book that has music in it. Um, so you may not need a binder right away, but you are going to get materials over time. You may get solos down the road. You're going to get ensemble music. You may get worksheets, handouts, and stuff like that. You need somewhere to pit that stuff in an organized fashion. So the binder needs to be not too big. You can have two binders, by the way. One where you just store things over a long period of time, just things you don't want to throw away, and one that you need right now with your current music. So for example, if this is your second year playing music, the stuff you used your first year, you can put that in your old binder and you can have a current, fresh, new binder. I, I wish I did this earlier on because I, I just kept having to make new binders, but I didn't think about just having all my stuff in an old binder and having a fresh new binder with the stuff I'm using right now. You open up, you're gonna have plastic sleeves. Plastic sleeves, right? So that means these little things. These little things right here. You're gonna need some of these, right? So Walmart, Target, Publix, maybe? I, I don't know, they're gonna be your best friend, right? If you have to look up on Amazon and order it all at once and get it shipped to your door next day because that's just a thing, then go ahead and do it, right? So plastic sleeves, you'll be able to place your music inside of these plastic sleeves so it remains well protected for a long, long period of time and you don't have to worry about it, right? So you're, you're, you're making your own book you're making your own book because you have uh, the rings, right? Three rings, bam, you put the plastic sleeve in, close it, your music's inside, you just made your own little book specifically in order of what you need, right? Exercises, uh, you'll be getting tons of exercises from me, um, maybe not just in this series, We'll probably do some in the series, but especially if you join me over at the studio and if you look into some of my other videos, you'll get exercises, right? So this is where you can place them in your practice binder, right? Uh, I have I have solos. I have a mallet solo. Uh, I have uh, some timpani uh, etudes. I have a snare etude. I have some just regular sheets of paper so I can write down my notes in here if I want to. Sometimes I do it on my phone. Uh, most of the time I do it on my phone, but I could do it in here too. So you can have a place just with sheet, with regular writing paper, uh, so that you can write down notes to the music that you're learning. Very important to reflect on what you're playing. All right, and and I have short, uh, and I have orchestral excerpts, and I have drum set stuff. I have it all in here, so I don't have to pull apart 5,000 different things, 
All right, I have it in here and I just, if I wanna mess with drum set, I turn to the back. If I wanna work on marimba, I go to the front. Very simple, very easy. When it's easier to start your practice session, it, you're less likely to hesitate, right? Cause I'm not thinking, oh, I have to take this out, take this out, I have to get this started, I have to do this. No, I don't have to do all that. I just take out my binder, open it up, get my sticks, and then get the thing I'm playing on, and then go ahead and play, right? Mallets, whatever position you're in, a binder with everything together is gonna make things whole lot easier and you won't have to deal with having a bunch of music everywhere and then suddenly trying to figure out oh where's this where's this this is crumpled up this one's in a folder this one you left at home no everything's together and last but not least practice pad now for those of you that don't own a drum that don't have a snare drum don't have a mallet set don't have anything you can get a practice pad not even not even one fancy like this like you can get a cheap $20, $15 practice pad from a local music store, most likely where you'll get your sticks and ear protection. Huh? Sticks and ear protection. And ask to see their practice pads. You'll probably find them somewhere. Get a small one, right? It's gonna help you work on accuracy and it's gonna be easier to carry around. Get a small one, have your sticks with you. Bam, sticks, practice pad, binder. And you are set. You are set, all right? If you want a music stand, Highly recommend it. Don't have to have one, but it only helps. If you want a stand, like a snare drum stand for your pad, I definitely recommend that, but it's not necessary at the beginning. It is not a necessity. It is a luxury at the beginning. I don't care if you even use your bed and a pillow or your couch or the floor. Use something, but sticks definitely are a must. Last two things I think you definitely should have is a journal, to reflect, right? You can use your phone, but usually people get distracted with cell phones and stuff like that. It's so easy to flip over to whatever social media thing you're using or even distract yourself with a YouTube video. But uh, having a paper uh, journal, that can help a lot. Like that can help so much because you just, you play, you write down what you need to work on, you reflect, you think, and you grow in a very clear way that gets your, your ideas on paper. And then when you practice next time, you just look at it and then it's like, it's like you never left the practice room. You don't have to think, oh, what did I do? What should I do? You know what you need to do, All right? And the second thing is a metronome. This can be on your phone. If you're using your phone in the practice room, I definitely recommend airplane mode, do not disturb. Right? Do not get distracted when you're in your practice room. You have only a finite amount of energy and focus. And if that gets, uh, if that gets cut in half, thirds, if you, if you have divided attention, then you're not going to really grow as much as you possibly can. Right? So using your phone, metronome app, download one. It's going to be fine. Uh, an old school little metronome device by itself. I'm sure you can find those. Metronome app is the easiest one. This is the one I do. And that way you can get consistent with feeling the pulse and not have to rely on yourself to play the pulse correctly, to play in time, right? You can have a device that helps you. So metronome, that thing that goes click, 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 click. It's something that helps us stay in time when we play. It's very important. It's very important to have a good sense of time. So literally app store, type in metronome app, Download it, you'll know what to do when we end up talking about it eventually down the, down the line. Whenever your teacher talks to you about it, uh, whenever we talk about it, whenever one of your fellow musicians uh, explain it to you, you'll be ready because you'll have that, that device there. You'll have it prepared. All right, that is materials. Go ahead and check out the PF down below. And so now you'll have your armor <laughs> to help face this world as a developing musician. See you in the next one.